Welcome to part two of my guide on how to make checkpoint setups. Today we're gonna to talk about setups for saving complex states in your levels, specifically saving multiple bits of data, such as collecting various apples or having a door unlocked while also having a checkpoint or saving a power-up system separately from saving a checkpoint. This video is like a part two. Please check out the part one video for simple checkpoint setups and the basics of how a swap game node on works. While I highly recommend you watch part one first, if you're already comfortable with swap game node on for checkpoint setups, then be my guest. Today I'll be talking to you through the theory of how we save multiple bits of data in one swap game node on. This will be through two main examples. One is through saving a large number of booleans, which can individually correspond to separate events in the level having been completed or not. And the second is going to be on a couple of totally different numbers, which could be like a power-up system or the number of the checkpoint that you're on. For example, I'm using this technique in this bird-based level in order to separately store the total number of lives left on the player character, as well as their total running score in the level. This allows all the scoring obstacles in the level to respawn while also allowing the player character to break and die multiple times. First, I wanna teach you how to save multiple bits of information simultaneously. So here, if I grab apples number two and apples number four, then I die when I respawn, exactly apples number two and four are taken, but not one or three. How exactly does this work? While you still have to take care of everything just like before, the new part here is how we encode the data structure. We can take a similar approach to before, but remember that the swap game node on only lets us keep one number, all right? So I want to be able to keep more than one number. I want to keep whether or not Apple 1 is destroyed, whether or not Apple 2 is destroyed, whether or not Apple 3 is destroyed, etc. The first thing we need to do is encode multiple numbers into one number. We do this by compressing all the data into one number that we can save when we die, and when we reload the level, then I'll decompress that data to read out all the numbers back individually. First, I'll show you the easy case where you're working with a ton of booleans, specifically a bunch of separate events that are all either zero or one. Then I'll show you how to store multiple completely different numbers that can be greater than one. What I'm going to do is store my data as a number in binary. For this, I'll give a quick little recap on how the binary number system works. In general, in binary, you store numbers as a combination of zeros and ones. Every number is worth twice as much as the digit before it. In decimal, everything is a power of 10, but in binary, every digit is a power of two. So here, if I have the binary number 0101, that corresponds to the number five. Why? Because the first digit is times one. One times one is one. Digit number two is zero times two, which is zero. Digit number three is one times four, which is four. Digit number four is zero times eight, which is zero. By adding these numbers all up together, that gives you the number five. We can do this to store all sorts of numbers in binary instead. So the first digit, the ones place, is a one if Apple one has been destroyed and a zero if Apple one has been not destroyed. The twos place is a zero or a one, depending on whether or not Apple two has been destroyed. The fours place tells us if Apple three has been collected and the eights place tells us if Apple four has been collected. Working with this data has two main parts. We save it and then we load it. To save the data, we take the digit for each individual Apple and then we make that number using the binary number system to give us the number that corresponds to which apples were collected and which were not. The second step is to decompress it and I'll get to that after. Now, since each digit is a power of two, Apple number one, gives a value of one. Apple number two is a value of two. Apple number three is a value of four. And apple number four is a value of eight. If we had more apples, they would be worth 16, 32, 64, 128. You keep going powers of two. So look at how this saved number changes. When I grab an apple here, if I grab apples number two and three, that's the number six. In binary, this number is 0110. And if I restart the game, then apples numbers two and three are taken. If I then grab apple number one, which gives me plus one, seven, seven is zero one 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 in binary. This corresponds to apples one, two, and three being taken, but not apple number four. So when I respawn the game, then those three apples are acquired, but apple four is not. So how do I do this? Each apple is connected to its own destruction sensor, connected to apples one, two, three, and four. Each destruction sensor feeds into a map node on, 
this map node on gives us times one, or times two, or times four, or times eight. This value depends on which apple we collected. To encode it, we add up all the numbers together. Then whenever we die, or we press our magical reset button, we do the saved number times one goes into the swap game node on. For the special case of zero going in, zero won't activate the swap game node on, so we have a separate retry coded in for it. This completes the compression process of saving which apples have been destroyed. When I respawn, I need this data to come back out so I can destroy all the relevant apples. Each apple has its own relevant destroy object node on. Now swap game node on is giving us this number that we've interpreted in binary. Our next goal is to tease out each individual digit because I want to read just the digit for the apple number one, just the digit for apple number two, just the digit for apple number three, etc. When you're using a modulo operation that matches your number system, we can use this to get the last several digits of that number in that number system. 1637 mod 10 is just the number seven, the last one digit. 1637 mod 100 is 37, the last two digits. 1637 mod 1000 is 637, just the last three digits. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing in binary. 0101 modulo two gives us that last digit of one. 0101 mod four is just 01. 0101 mod eight is 101, the last three digits. This just follows whatever powers are in your number system. The problem is that I don't want the last several digits. I want to just read the individual digits one at a time. So the game plan is to use the modulo operation to separate these parts out one at a time. And here I'll show you how that works. First, 0101 modulo two, that gives us that last one digit. And that corresponds to the number one, which is whether or not Apple one has been destroyed. Now I'm gonna subtract that number, which is 0101 mod two, away from that original number, and this deletes that last digit. This makes sure that la that last digit is equal to zero. So then I'm left with 0100. When I take modulo four, that gives me the last two digits. But now, since I subtracted that last digit by itself, the last digit is zero, so I'm just looking at the two's place, which is a zero for apple two not being collected. Then I subtract again, and this ensures that both the ones and the two's place are now zero. So when I take a modulo eight, then I have the last three digits. Since the last two digits are zero, I'm only reading that third digit. I'm only reading the four's place, which gives me a four if apple three is collected and zero otherwise. Then I can subtract that number as well. So I'm only left with that very first digit in the eight's place, the one that corresponds to apple number four. For this operation, we'll be using a modulo operator, which uses this code block. So if I want to take modulo two, I map zero to two to negative 180 to positive 180 into an angle difference node on, and then I map in reverse, negative 180 to positive 180 to zero to two. This gives me mod two. For mod four, it's zero to four and zero to four instead. And for mod eight, we have zero to eight and zero to eight. So let me walk you through the actual decompression. First, I'm gonna get that last digit. I need to know if the number ends in a zero or a one, which corresponds to apple number one being destroyed. I'm first gonna take this number modulo two because this number modulo two is just that last one digit. If that apple was destroyed, this last digit is a one. And so this will trigger the destroy object to break apple number one again. Then I'm gonna subtract that last digit from the big number. Then I put this number through modulo four. Modulo four will give you the last two digits in binary. However, we subtracted out that last digit. So that last digit right now is guaranteed to be zero. So the result will either be one zero in binary if the apple was collected, which is the number two, or zero zero in binary, which is zero. If it gives us a two, that activates the destroy object to destroy apple number two. Then I take that number where the last digit is guaranteed zero and I subtract that second digit in binary, which is a zero or a two. The result that we have here is we subtracted the very first digit in binary from this node on, and we subtracted the second digit in binary from this node on. So right now, the last two digits are guaranteed to be zero. So when I do modulo eight, I look at the last three digits in binary, which are either one zero zero, which is the number four, or it's zero zero zero, 
which is the number zero if apple three was not collected. If it's four, then destroy apple number three. If you subtract, we get the last digit and then this controls apple number four. I understand that this can be a bit complicated, which is why I'm gonna just give you this sample code if you want to use it in your own levels. Again, the point of this code is not to be optimal, but to teach you how it works. The last demonstration will be how to save multiple numbers that are not equal to zero or one. This green number, for example, can be zero, one, or two, and then it loops. This pink number can be zero, one, two, three, four, and then it loops. So the green has three different values and the pink has five different values. And I want to save this information. So I'm going to encode this similarly to before. The difference is that instead of multiplying by powers of two, I'm going to just multiply by every other number that came before it. So look right now at my saved number, it's zero. If I increment this, it goes up by exactly one. Now, every time I touch the green number, it goes up by five instead. Why did I pick five? Because there are five different possibilities of what can be going on in the pink block. So I need my green digit to be times five. I'm just showing this with two numbers. If I had a third number, then that third number would be times 15 because it would be times three and times five. But this is the general idea. So here, if I have a value of one in the green and two in the pink, that corresponds to the number seven. And if I reload my level, what happens is that we counted and we saved those numbers. The green is at number one and the pink is again at number two. We have successfully saved that data and reloaded it. So what is different? Each of these blocks has their own counter that corresponds to the number on each of them. Just like before, we were multiplying by powers of two, but instead, now we're multiplying by every number that came before. So the pink block is with a map times one. The green block is then to a map of times five because we have five different possibilities for the first pink block. We sum these together to compress that data. And whenever we want to restart level, that gets times one to go into a swap game node on and a special case for CP0. How do we reload this data? First, I'm going to go in order of the smallest multiplier to the biggest multiplier. So first, modulo five which corresponds to the pink block, which was times one. So just to be clear here, if the pink is on number three, that's the number three. And when we reload, it's zero and three. If I touch the green counter once, that gives me eight, which is five more. So when I reload, that still gives me the number three. This is because three, eight, and 13 are all congruent modulo five. It's similar to working in binary, but instead of being powers of two, we have a ones place, and we have a fives place. Whatever number that is modulo five, that goes in at the start times on start to load in the relevant counter. Then we subtract that last bit modulo five from the original number. So what number do we have? Now that we subtracted the pink, we either have zero for zero on the green counter. We have five if one is on the green counter and we have 10 if two is on the green counter. Since this is in base five, we first need a map node on to divide by five. Then I'll take that result modulo three to get that digit. And this corresponds to what value was actually on that counter. Times on start, so we feed in the counter only at the beginning of the level, and voila. Now we have a full checkpointing system that saves multiple numbers. Three and five aren't special. You could pick any combination of numbers. You could pick multiple numbers. As long as the number isn't so big that GBG can still store it, you'll be good. As per usual, because this was very complicated, I'm gonna supply you with this sample code uploading this level so that you can play with it yourself. With this, you should have all the tools you need to save your own data, to reload, to bring in different states, etc., and do whatever sort of checkpoint system you want with your level. I do not recommend that you copy my setups. My setups are not optimized. My setups are to teach you how this works so that you can make the one that works best for your level, which is probably not the same system that is the best for my level. But with this video, I hope I opened your eyes to the different options you have available you have non-checkpoint systems, you have teleporting checkpoint systems, you have swap game node on, and you can save different amounts of information to reload and save that for the player. So the player can keep whatever progress in the level and have that going. I really hope to see you use this tech in your levels to make checkpoint setups. Because if there's one thing that Loop loves seeing in levels, it's checkpoints. Please use them well and use them frequently. The power is yours. If you need any more explanation, feel free to reach out to me on stream or discord, whatever, my socials are down below. If you like this content, like and subscribe, and I'll see you around later.